So remember in our finite difference, if we draw a function, we are discretizing the function by storing the values of the function at the grid points. And then we use Taylor series, a manipulation that is intrinsically differential to approximate the differential operators just using these points. Now you should understand finite volume. In finite volume, if I draw the same function, if I draw a function like that, ooh, what, what did I? Uh, if I draw a similar function, this is what I have on the in the computer. What I have is the average over these finite volumes. I mean, these are intervals in 1D, but they are going to be truly volumes in 3D. They are areas in 2D. They are the average values of the function inside these volumes. And why is that the case? Well, two things. One is that now I'm really representing the function. I have a complete form of the function, but piecewise, piecewise constant. And that form actually does respect that the function can be, con can be discontinuous, right? Actually, it even represents a continuous and smooth function as piecewise discontinuous functions. So that's one advantage over finite difference in solving conservation laws. And two is, does the average of the function over domain have any natural link to any of the forms we just uh, derived in this lecture? Differential form, uh, uh, primitive form, conservative form, integral form? The, vo the volume averages. How does it relate to one of the forms we discussed? <coughs> it does relate to only the integral form. Because if you look at the integral of the value over a and b, and think of this a and b as the boundary of one of the intervals, how does the integral relate to the average over over the interval. So how does average relate to the integral? What is the correct way to average a function over a continuous domain? Yes? It's just the integral of the function over the x. Like over the domain size, yes. Just the integral of the function over the size of the domain is just the, the value, uh, is the average is the mathematical definition of the average of the function over that small interval. So, it is a direct representation, not even an approximation. This is exact, that the left-hand side in finite volume can be exactly written as the time derivative of the volume size, which is constant, times the volume average. Right, so so d d t of u d x is exactly equal to the size of the volume b minus a times d u bar a b d t, and this u bar over a and b is exactly what we store in finite volume. Okay, now. What are we missing to get the derivative? This is equal to flux at a minus flux of b, right? We need to somehow compute the flux of the function at the left and right of each interval, or at the boundaries of these discrete small volumes. And we actually don't have the information here. Because if you look at the continuous function, the value of the function is here. 
and the flux can be computed as by evaluating the flux function, which is an analytic function, at this value of u, which is lost. We only know that the value is somehow in between this, uh, this average and this average. We don't know what the value is. Is that necessary though? Because in the very next interval, it's not in between the two. Exactly. That may not even be true because over the next interval, the value of the function at the interval is right here. It lies even outside the range of the left domain average and right domain average. So the finite volume involves approximation not on the differential operator, but on the function itself. You have to somehow interpolate the function not in the classical sense of interpolating from some points to some other points. It is interpolating the function from the averages of the function over domains to values of the function in the do on the domain averages, uh, on the domain boundaries. So go from the averages to the pointwise values is the approximation we need to invoke in a finite volume uh, approximation for solving differential.